Amen. Let's get into the Word. Proverbs chapter 1. You have your text. You have your Bible. You can take it out. And we're going to look at it. You don't have it? I have a couple of copies here. Did you pass these out? Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 1. King David had an excellent life growing up. He grew up in the king's palace. Can you say king's palace? King's palace. King David, as a young boy, killed a giant. And because he killed this giant, he got the privilege to live in the king's palace. So he lived a pretty good life as a young boy. The life of, we call it the luxury life. But then one morning, David chose to sin against God. And then he chose to try and cover up his sin by killing his next door neighbor. So from that time on, David's life was full of calamity, which means trouble. But later on, he had a son. And his son's name was Solomon, which means love of God or the peace of God. And Solomon, too, grew up in a palace, the son of the king. But Solomon grew up the son of the king, whereas David grew up a guest in the king's palace. In other words, Solomon was the son of the king. David just lived in the king's house. So when Solomon became king after his father died, God spoke to him and said, ask for whatever you want. Ask me for whatever you want. And Solomon asked for wisdom. He asked for understanding and discernment. God, give me wisdom Amen. because your people are so numerous that we can't even count them. And I'm just a little child. So give me knowledge and understanding. And so God granted him his request and made Solomon the wisest human being to ever walk on the face of the earth. He answered his prayer. He also made Solomon the wealthiest man to ever live. He was the richest king to ever live. So Solomon decided he chose. Everybody say chose. chose. Say it loud. Chose. chose. Solomon chose to leave a legacy for his son. He chose to write down some words of wisdom so that his son could know right from wrong. The book of Proverbs is all about the wisdom that God gave Solomon. Amen. Yeah. So in chapter 1, he started out by saying to know wisdom and instruction. Yeah. That was the goal of the book. So young men and women, if you want to be wise, I'm suggesting that you read the Bible. Because in this book are words of wisdom and instruction. And in chapter 1 of Proverbs, he outlined two different types of people. One was those who fear the Lord. In verse 7, he said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So one type of person is those who fear the Lord. Called wise. If you fear the Lord, you're what? Wise. You're wise. You're prudent. You understand. The other group of people in chapter 1 
is called the fool. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So two types of people are what? The wise and the foolish. Foolish people are also called sinners. So today, I want you to choose which one do you want to be. You have two choices. Wise or foolish. So let me do this. For the next few minutes, we're going to talk about making choices. Making choices. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29, it says, Because they refuse to choose the Lord, because they made a choice not to choose God. So choice number one, choose the Lord. Choose the Lord. Choose the fear of the Lord. For otherwise you become a fool, which the Bible calls a sinner. And there's three types of sinners. There's the simple, there's the scorner, and there's the foolish. Foolish people hate instruction. And we don't want to go there. So choose the Lord. And I'm suggesting, because I'm talking to the Sunday school, Choose the Lord at a young age. Amen. Choose the Lord at a young age. And when you choose the Lord, you become wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So choose the Lord at a young age. And when you choose the Lord, it says he will give you his spirit and he will put his word inside of you. That's in verse 23. You become covered by God. So choose the Lord at a young age. The second choice, choose your friends wisely. Say it. Choose your friends wisely. You choose. Don't let them choose you. I'll say it again. You make the choice who your friends are going to be. Don't let them choose you. Because once you become wise, and God has his spirit living inside you, and his word is giving you instructions, your light will be shining. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So people will be drawn to you. You choose who your friends will be. Be very particular about who you hang out with. And don't let just anybody hang around you. Excuse me, I'm a Christian. I don't smoke, drink, lie, cheat, cheat. I can't do that, so we can't do that. And you can be nice about it. Choose your friends wisely. And you choose. Don't let them choose you. And also, there are benefits to having good friends. Somebody to study the scriptures with. Somebody to talk to. Someone to pray with. You have someone who can hold you accountable. Someone to encourage you along the way when you're going through your trial. There are benefits to choosing good friends. Amen. Choice number one, choose the Lord at a young age. Choice number two, choose your friends wisely. Because the Bible says... Evil communication corrupts good habits. In other words, if you're hanging around the wrong person, something bad is going to happen. Oh, well, she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That wouldn't have happened 
if you would have chose your friends wisely. Amen. Choice number three. Choose your career path. Choose your career path based on evidence. Now, that might be a little hard to understand, so let me break it down. Your parents are required by God to train you. Your parents are required by God to train up a child. You know the scripture. Train up a child in the way that it should go. So you're required to train your children. So your parents are going to expose you to different programs. Yes. Music, dance, theater, science, yes. mathematics, yes. public speaking. Yes. Whatever your parents <laughs> expose you to, don't fight against them. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. <laughs> they have a responsibility from God to expose you to life. So when they say, I put you in this class, go to the class. Because who knows whether you're going to be the next doctor or lawyer. They have a responsibility to train you, so don't fight against them. Choose your career based on evidence. Now, what do I mean by evidence? You're going to go through dance and music and science classes and public speaking, and you're going to take drawing classes and painting classes. You're going to have all types of opportunities in your life. Some of those opportunities you're going to do well at. You're going to get A's. You're going to get a certificate of completion. You're going to get a diploma. You're going to get an award, a blue ribbon. You're going to do well. Yes. You're going to get an A in that class. Yeah. So when it's time for you to choose a career path, uh -huh. you should base that choice on evidence. Uh -huh. yeah. I want to be a mortician. What's a mortician? Uh -huh. I don't know. It's just a big word. <laughs> no. You choose your career based on what you are good at. Amen. Based on evidence, Amen. you look back over your life and you say, I was good at this, I was good at this, I was good. And you choose your career based on your accomplishments. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. We don't just make a random choice. And your parents will help you make that choice. Yes. Your teachers and your coaches will also be a part of that process. And finally, in choosing a career path, be fearless. Don't be afraid to choose a career that might challenge you. Oh, well, I don't want to do that because it's too hard. Man, I can't do that. It's too tough. You're only 10 years old. Don't let fear dictate your choices. Be fearless. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. So when you make that career choice, choose based on evidence and don't be afraid to make tough choices. I didn't hear anybody say amen. 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 And finally, finally, number one, choose the Lord at a young age. Amen. Number two, choose your friends wisely. Uh -huh. Number three, choose your career based on evidence. And number four, choose your mate with patience. Be very patient when it comes to choosing your husband or your wife. And 
listen to advice. <laughs> My son, listen to your father's instruction and do not take lightly your mother's teaching. And by Solomon mentioning his mother, that was a big deal. Because back in the day, they didn't think too highly of women. But when Solomon said, listen to your mother, he opened up a whole world of possibility. Because your mother knows what's best for you. She has your best interest in mind. So listen to your father and your mother. Yes. When you want to choose a mate, ask them questions. Get advice. Because the worst thing we can do as Christians is marry the wrong person. Now, we get a choice. We can choose what kind of personality we want. I want a person that's real fun. I want a person that's real happy. I want a person that's kind of mellow and can take it easy and calm. I want a person that's funny. Ha ha. You get to choose that. But you do not get to choose whether they are a Christian or not. The Bible says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. So when you're choosing your mate, be patient with that choice. Choose with patience. Take your time. And let me say this before I close. <laughs> we choose mates, not dates. I'll say it again. We choose mates, not dates. In other words, we look for a person that we can marry a person that has the qualities that you would spend your life with. Why are you with someone who does not have the character that you're looking for in a mate? Amen. Know what you want and know what you don't want. Be very specific. Take your time. Because marriage is for life. Marriage is for life. So let's go over it one more time. Choice number one. Choose the Lord. Choose the Lord at a young age. Amen. Choice number two. Choose your friends wisely. Choice number three. Choose your career path based on evidence. And number four. Choose your life's partner with patience. With patience. Now, God had me to come here today to help some of you start thinking about the choices that you make. Because your choices will affect your whole life. Let me tell you this story, then I'm done. Mom said to Dad, the children have a final exam tomorrow, so we need to wrap this up. Send them to bed. Tell them to study their homework for one hour, and they go to bed. So Abraham went to his room, opened his notebook, and he went over his notes. He had already prepared for the test, and he went over the last-minute notes and things that he was, and then he prayed and went to sleep. It's about 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Sarah went to her room, closed the door, and started texting. And emailing and tweeting. And then the phone rang. Are you listening to me? Then the phone rang. It was Bartholomew. Ooh, Bartholomew. Oh, Bartholomew. And she's talking on the phone. Sad. Until two in the morning. What? And Bartholomew, oh, your eyes are like the stars on a cloudy day. <laughs> you can't even see the stars on a cloudy day. But she didn't care all oh, about Bartholomew. So then she realizes that it's two o'clock in the morning. And I 
to study my homework. So when she picks up her book, what happened? <laughs> Went right to sleep. The next day, Abraham gets up 6 o'clock. He's got his eight hours of sleep. He reads the Bible and prays, God, bless me with this test. I need your help because if I pass this final, I get to go to college. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. And he goes to school 10 minutes early, and he's ready for his exam. Sarah oversleeps. Oh. It's 8 o'clock. I'm late. And when she gets to school, they've already given the test. So she gets an F. The choices that you make in life will determine the quality of your life. Yes. yes. So in closing, choice number one. Choose the Lord at a young Choose age. Choose the Lord at a young age. Yes. Number two. Choose your, friends wisely. Choose your friends wisely. Number three. Choose your career. Choose your career path based on evidence. And number four. Choose your life. Be patient. When you choose your man. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these young minds. I pray, Father, that they would hear and increase learning. That they would make Proverbs chapter 1 their theme for the summer. That they would read it and digest it and become wise. And more importantly, Father, I pray in the name that is above every name. Yes. That they would choose the fear of the Lord. Yes. And that they would do that right now. Amen. In Jesus' name, Jesus name, it is done. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord.